Hi friends, welcome back. And for those of you who are new here, hi, I'm Amy. I'm a full-time reseller primarily on the Poshmark app, but I do dabble on other online platforms and I sell locally. Today I'll be doing another ship with me video. I do these videos every week and I go day to day and I show the different items I'm shipping out. I talk about how much they sold for, what I paid for them and what my profit was. So you wanna be sure to watch all the way to the end because I always have interesting and unique items and I'm sure you can learn some new things to keep your eyes out for when you're out thrifting. So these are sales from over the weekend. It was an okay weekend. I was hopeful for a very busy January and so far it's not really starting out to be that way. Uh, but I am going to keep listing, sharing, uh, relisting, sending out offers, doing all the things. The first item that sold is this Orvis black leather belt. I love selling belts. Uh, they are a bread and butter item for me. This sold for $23 and it sold somewhat quickly. I paid $2 for this at the Goodwill. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $16.40. I am really finding that black belts sell quicker and more frequently than brown belts do. So I am really trying to keep my eyes out and pick up every black belt that is affordable that I can find. And as you saw from that one, it's just a basic black leather belt and it paid, it sold for $23. So if you can find them at the bins or at, you know, a smaller thrift store for an affordable price, definitely pick them up. Uh, did I say my profit was $16.40 after posh, posh fees and my cost of goods? The next item that sold is this semi-vintage, or it's actually vintage, I'm pretty sure, uh, bolo tie with abalone shell. Now, I've had a couple of questions about what I mean when I say semi-vintage, and because of the generation that I am from, it seems strange that items for the, from the 90s and the early 2000s are considered vintage. So a lot of times I will say semi-vintage if something's like from the 2000s or, you know, even mid to late 2000s, some people will reference that as vintage. So I get a lot of questions about that and that is what I am referring to. Uh, most people consider vintage to be an item that is 20 or more years old. So this bolo tie sold for $20. I might have been able to wait to get a little bit more, but I found that bolo ties, I just don't get super high prices for them. So if I can get, you know, in the $20 to $30 range, then I will go ahead and accept it. Uh, unless it's like a sterling silver, uh, this was just silver tone and it wasn't genuine leather or anything. Uh, plus I had paid $2 for this. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $14. For my small belts and items like this, I like to use the small flat rate box. There's also a box uh, 1096L that's slightly larger than that, that is good for wider belts. So the next item is this Vince Camuto. They call this the Orla Tote. It is a very popular tote for them because it is looks similar to the Christian Dior book tote. Now I ordered this for myself and it's been sitting in my closet for maybe two years and as you can see i have never used it i just really thought this snake print was cool and uh they had it either a black friday or end of year sale where they had all of their markdowns an additional 40 percent off so i got this for 40 dollars and the retail is 128 dollars at that time i actually ordered two of them so that I could sell the other one and pay for mine so I didn't it didn't cost me anything. That other one sold right away for over a hundred dollars. Uh, I decided to move this on because I purchased another fancy handbag. If you are new here I love designer handbags so I try and you know move things out that I'm not using if I'm going to spend money on a new bag. 
So this sold for $108. I think it had discounted shipping. Like I said, I paid $40 for this. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, I still made $44.38 on something that was just sitting in my closet. I am gonna package this up off camera and I'm not, I'm gonna have to figure out either how to make a box or see if I have a larger box that it will fit in. But I was happy to, uh, you know, have that sell quick so I couldn't have second thoughts and put that money towards uh, a new bag that I like. So the next item I was kind of surprised about, these sold somewhat quickly. These are soft brand boots, S-O-F-F-T. And I don't usually pick up this brand, but I liked this kind of lace up detail on the back. What I wasn't sure about was this wedge. I felt like maybe it had kind of a dated look to it, but they were in excellent, almost like new condition and they were five dollars so that's why i decided to pick them up and they ended up selling for 65 dollars, which i think is wonderful these do have a pretty high retail price and some styles are sold uh, through the sundance catalog which is a very popular or can be very popular catalog and they have nice quality high-end stuff so I guess maybe, and I've had a pair of soft boots before with this lace-up detail, and I got a high price for those too. So maybe this is something, you know, that we should all kind of give another chance to this brand. Maybe you guys are, and I just uh, was missing out. But anyways, I'm really happy with that $65 sale. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $47. I think that is really great for this brand of boots. Let me know in the comments down below, do you do well with this brand? Usually for my uh, tall boots like this, I use the large shipping box number seven and I just kind of, fold them in half and slip them in there. I have yet to have any problems shipping them like that. Okay, the next item, something else that I bought for myself and never wore. This is just a Wild Fable brand sweatshirt from Target, uh, but I got it at the Goodwill. As you may know, uh, sometimes the Goodwill buys pallets from Target. For years, I thought that Target donated to the Goodwill, but I asked the manager about it once and she said they in fact buy pallets to resell from Target. So this had made it to the half off color day, so it was only $2 and I was like, oh, that's kind of cute and cozy, maybe I'll wear that. I always think that and I, I just hardly ever wear sweatshirts. So I decided to list it. It sold for $14 with discounted shipping. Again, I mean, I wouldn't have bought this to resell, uh, but that still gave me a profit of $7.03. Nothing to get too excited about, but one less thing in my closet and um, a little bit of profit. So I have actually been surprised when I buy stuff from the Goodwill that is Target brand, it usually sells pretty quickly for me, of course for, you know, under $20, but um, still maybe something to keep your eyes out for if it makes it to the half off day at uh, the Goodwill. So that is it for today. Don't go anywhere. I will either be back with more uh, to share more items that I've sold or with some reseller tips. If you're enjoying my videos, I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button. Uh, when I look at my analytics, I think more than 50% of you who are watching my videos aren't subscribed. And when you subscribed, it really helps me out and it encourages me. Also, if you give this video a thumbs up, that also really helps me. Don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. 
Hey there, it's Wednesday and I've got quite a few sales to ship out, uh, an exciting Carhartt sale. So let's get started. The first item that sold is this pair of vintage Christian Dior eyeglass frames. I uh, picked these up at the estate sale of an optometrist and they had a whole bunch of designer frames for $5 a pair. There were some people crowding around the table and at first I didn't think anything of it. And then I saw one pair that was Christian Dior. So I just started grabbing all of them. I ended up spending, let's see, I think $150 because I got 30 pairs. Yeah, about 30 pairs. And they have just been an amazing buy. Uh, these didn't sell for quite as much as some of the others, but they still sold for $56. I think I sold some pairs um, above $150. So it really, I mean, I have made so much money on that pickup and I'm really surprised. Most of the um, glasses just had clear lenses in them, like they were demo glasses at the optometrist. These ones actually had prescription lenses in there. And I did indicate to the buyer that there were prescription lenses and they would need to, you know, either have them turned into sunglasses or add their prescription to them. So they sold for $56. I think with discounted shipping, I paid $5, like I said. So my profit after posh fees, my cost of goods, and the shipping discount was $36.82. I think that is great. And really, at this point, I am all profit on those because I have made so much money already. The next item that sold is this fun, somewhat vintage white leather belt with this really cool uh, bamboo style buckle. I picked this up because of the buckle and also because this was a plus size. It was marked 2X, but it's vintage, so I think it may be more like a 1X. Also, it was only 50 cents at one of our little charity thrift stores. It sold for $25. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $19.50. Love selling belts. More and more of you are commenting on my videos saying that you're picking up belts and you're making money. Some of you are selling them for really high prices, which is so exciting to me. Uh, you know, that's one of the reasons that I have this channel is to share information so that I can help other people uh, improve their resale business and make more money. Okay, so another belt sale. This is a woven kind of cord belt with leather. It is Eddie Bauer. Yes, it is. I think this is maybe from the 2000s. So I put Y2K in my title and description. This ended up selling for $23. I had paid $3 for it. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $15.40. Nice little profit. I do have um, over 100 belts listed in my closet. So that can, you know, help with me selling them more frequently. And I'm always listing new belts at least weekly, once a week, I am adding new belts to my closet. So I think that, you know, that activity can improve my chances of selling more, but it sounds like you guys are having luck too. Okay, so now for the Carhartt sale. So I made a reel about this jacket. I picked up this semi-vintage Carhartt jacket at the Goodwill. It has a blanket lining. So someone asked me about looking up the style of a Carhartt jacket. So the style number is located at the bottom of the tag. It'll be the size here and then the style number. It also will say, so it'll say the style number and then the color. This one was marked BLK for black and it may, it's actually coming across black on camera. 
or faded black, but in person, it really looks green. So I uh, put that in my description and title. I'm gonna give this another look over before I package it up, but it ended up selling for $250. I'm so excited. Initially, I did think it was worth more, uh, but I did figure out that it wasn't quite as old as some of the other green blanket lined jackets. Um, I can't remember, I, oh, I looked up the style number and that's how I could tell that it wasn't quite as old. It was still a discontinued uh, style number, so that still increased the value. I paid $18 for this. The Goodwill had it marked at $19.99 and I had a 10% off coupon. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $182. I'll have to admit, I am not an expert on Carhartt whatsoever. Whenever I see one, I just look it up. I, you know, I'll either use Google Lens uh, to, you know, snap a quick picture and see if any come up, or I'll look up that style number. Whenever there's one that's blanket lined, or if it has a, um, this one did not have the leather patch, but some of the older ones have, instead of this like canvas patch, it is a brown leather patch. So anytime I see that it is, you know, the blanket lined is more desirable and the leather patch indicates that it could be older. So I just do research. So if you find one, I recommend that you do research as well. I always do really well with Carhartt as you have seen. So I am really thrilled. You know, it's funny, I had that priced at $3.95 initially because I thought it was older and I just left it priced at that, uh, thinking that I would get offers. And I got some haters on uh, my listing telling people they shouldn't buy this, they could buy a new one. Another guy told me that it was a new coat, This that the same one was available at Dick's Sporting Goods, and that was not true. It's very similar to this, but it's not the same as this. And all of the um, sizes were sold out. There was only size small. So even if even if it was still available, it is desirable, which could uh, increase the resale value. So don't you know? Don't get down when people make you know comments on your listing. Just do your research and stick to your guns, and um, you'll get a high price. So. Okay, so the next item it sold is this fun and funky faux fur jacket. It has these knit kind of sweater sleeves. It was by Monterey Fashions. I just thought this was really fun and funky. Uh, the Goodwill had it priced at $12.99 and I saw it initially and decided to pass for the $12.99. Uh, but then it ended up going to half off day. So I got it for $6.50. And I just love picking up these, you know, funky, fun pieces because there are a lot of people out there that like to wear this kind of statement look. And this had a very, you know, 70s, 80s vibe to it. I put all the keywords in there like Aspen and Snow Bunny, fuzzy, cozy, soft, warm, knit. Um, I, I will put vegan friendly faux fur. I don't put vegan fur or vegan leather in a listing unless uh, it specifically says that on the tag because I had a very bad uh, experience with putting vegan, just vegan leather in a description. The, the buyer went off her rails uh, saying that it wasn't vegan leather, even though it was faux leather. And I, some people think there is a difference. Uh, the description in the dictionary just says non-leather. So I just put vegan friendly faux leather so that uh, they know, or, or vegan friendly faux fur. Okay. Blah, blah, blah. So that ended up selling for $50, which I was pretty happy about. I did list it a little bit higher, I think at 79, but I am very motivated to accept offers on my coats right now because I want to get them moved out. I paid $6.50. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $33.50. And that didn't take a too terribly long time to sell. So I think though, all in all, that is a pretty great sale. The next item that sold is this pair of Timberland kind of 
boots. I don't know if these are snow boots or combat boots. These are almost brand new. Someone gave these to me and they just didn't end up being my style. So I decided to list them and they took a while to sell. They sold for $40, but that's still a nice little profit for me since I didn't pay anything for them. Let's see, the box I'm using on these, I need to do them. I might actually finish these up off camera because I'm not sure how I, I need to do that exactly. Okay, so they sold for 40, I paid zero, so that made my profit $32. That's great for something that was given to me. The next item's kind of a funny sale. This is a, a vintage 2000s Lucky Brand uh, hoodie sweatshirt, and it has this beautiful embroidery on it. So this was mine. I got this, I don't know if I got it in the late 90s or in the, the 2000s, um, but for some reason it just kept hanging around and I never got rid of it. And then I decided that I didn't want it hanging around anymore. So I listed it and I listed it kind of high and it sold for $47. Some of these, you know, Y2K pieces with the embroidery or Juicy Couture stuff is selling for good money now. So if you've got some, something cool in your closet that's been hanging around, list it and list it high. I'm kind of fumbling today, sorry about that, but I'm excited about this, you know, something that was just in my closet. Uh, you know, I know that I bought this new at Macy's, so I don't know exactly how much I paid for it, but I'm putting my cost of goods to zero because it came out of my closet. So that made my profit $35.58. I'm absolutely thrilled with that because if I had, a, you know, tried to sell this at a yard sale, I would have been lucky to get maybe five bucks for it. So that is really great. So it's turning out to be a pretty good week. I hope I um, have some more sales. No sales on Cherish so far this week, and I have been listing on there. So fingers crossed I have a couple of sales there because usually I have higher dollar sales and that can really uh, elevate my week. One thing I did want to mention about that is I sold a pair of chairs on Cherish, I think it's been almost eight weeks ago, and they just got picked up by the shippers last weekend, and um, they are going to Nevada. I'm not sure it could be another week or two before they're delivered, and on Cherish, you don't get paid out until your item is delivered and, and the 48-hour inspection period has passed. So... Yeah, I sold those chairs, but I have uh, it'll be two and a half months before I get my money for those. So that's just something to uh, understand and take into consideration if you're considering selling on Cherish. It does take longer uh, for my items to get picked up because I am in a small town kind of off the beaten path. If you live in a larger city or more metropolitan area, your items will get picked up and delivered more quickly, probably. Okay, don't go anywhere. I will be back with some more sales, hopefully. Hi again, it's Friday and I've got, I think eight or nine things to ship out. It's been a pretty great 48 hours. So I did finally have a couple sales on Cherish this week, which I am happy about. <clears throat> the first item that sold is this vintage covered jar. Um, I don't know what to call it. I called it a biscuit jar. I think I also put humidor in my title. I wasn't really certain exactly what it was. It has ceramic on the interior. I strictly picked this up because I thought it had a cool masculine oops, look to it. It did have this glue residue and a number of cracks on it. This took years to sell. I don't want to say how long. I'm glad that it sold. It sold for $90. So maybe it was worth the wait. I don't know. I paid $10 for it. So after Cherish's fee and my cost of goods, that made my profit $61.30. I am super happy to get that out of my inventory, even though I thought it was a really cool piece. The next item that sold is this red footed dish. 
and I just thought this was really cute um, and I thought it was Viking glass so that's why I picked it up. This colored glass has been pretty trendy lately. This didn't end up being quite as good as I thought it would be but it did sell for $33. Uh, I paid $3 for it so after Cherish's Cherish's fee, which is 22%, that made my profit $23.40. I'm going to go ahead and package these both up off camera. So I'm going to move them out of the way. If you uh, are looking for tips on how to package breakable items, I have a link in the description box below to a packaging video to give you some tips on how I do it. I, um, kind of over package my items but it will it'll show you uh, some things to make sure that your items get to their destination safely okay so the rest of the sales uh, sold on Poshmark the first item is this semi vintage uh, blue topaz and sterling silver necklace when I say semi vintage I mean like from the 90s or 2000s it's, it's hard for me to think that is technically vintage, so that's why I say semi-vintage, although uh, vintage items are considered to be items that are more than 20 years old. Some people even use vintage for items from the 2010s, but whatever just so you guys know i get a lot of questions about why i say what i mean when i say semi-vintage so that necklace sold for 36 dollars. i think it may have had discounted shipping but i'm not sure uh, i paid five for it after posh fees and my cost of goods that made my profit $21.78 this didn't take a super long time to sell so that makes me happy for my jewelry, I typically use uh, either recycled boxes or uh, boxes that I get from the dollar store. You can get a set of three of these craft boxes in different sizes from the dollar store and they end up being about, what is it? I think about 40 cents a piece now that the prices have gone up. And I could probably get a better price on these. I just kind of like that you get the different sizes all in one. I'm probably going to look into getting some different jewelry boxes now that uh, these are, you know, getting more expensive. Okay, the next item is this really fun pair of vintage Thunderbird kind of tribal Native American style dangle earrings. These are made out of wood or the top part is. I just thought they were really cool. So these ended up selling for $25. I picked them up at an estate sale for $2. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $18. I've gotten a lot of comments about uh, selling jewelry and I think it is, if you can find it affordably in your area, I really think it's a great bread and butter uh, item. And you know, if you buy vintage jewelry, it's less likely that there will be, you know, as much competition for that particular item because it's probably gonna be more unique than say, you know, Nike leggings or something like that. Uh, but I do find that vintage jewelry can take time to sell. Okay, so I pay, or they sold for 25, I paid two, so that made my profit $18. Did I already say that? I, I already forgot. <laughs> Boy, we had a crazy winter storm come in. It is only 12 degrees outside right now, and it is supposed to get down to negative four tonight, which I'm not excited about. I strongly dislike winter. I'm definitely a warm weather kind of gal. Okay, the next item that sold is this leather belt. It has a mock croc or like gator print on it. This sold for $35. I thought this was a really pretty belt. And I priced it up a little bit higher. 
but I got that $35 offer and I thought about it for a little bit and I just went, went ahead and accepted it. I am really trying to be more easygoing and accept more reasonable offers just because I have so much inventory and I am really in this business to sell things, not keep them. So unless it is a really special, unique piece, I am going to be more easygoing and accept more offers. Okay, so it sold for $35. I paid $3, so that made my profit $25. I might need to get a bigger box for that one. Okay, this was another one that I just went ahead and accepted an offer. It is a vintage brown leather belt, but it had some scuffs and distressing and marks. There was no brand name. I just listed it under the vintage brand. It is very skinny and small size. I got an offer for $12, which is probably one of the lowest amounts I have accepted for a belt. But I just felt like that was really not that exciting of a piece and so i just went ahead and accepted it plus i only paid a dollar for it so after posh fees and my cost of goods that made my profit eight dollars and five cents not really what i aimed for for profits i like to have at least a 25 dollar profit but we all know that you know it doesn't always work out the way we think it will. And so we just have to move the inventory out and take what we can get for it. So the next item that sold is this pair of boots and these are by Remonte, R-E-M-O-N-T-E. And I had never heard of this brand, but when I saw them, they just seemed like a nice quality boot and they were in really nice condition. Plus, they were only priced at $6. And when I actually, when I was in the thrift store, I thought that the brand was remote. And I think I did a thrift haul, and I even said in the thrift haul that the brand was uh, remote. So I couldn't find information on them in the thrift store. But I just went with my gut, and I picked them up anyways, and they ended up selling for $49. I think that was oops, a pretty great price. And when I looked up the retail, I think it was like 119 or 129. So they had, you know, they had a decent retail and with them being in excellent condition, I thought it was definitely worth it. So they sold for 49. I paid six. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $30.22. These didn't take a super long time to sell, maybe a month or so. So that makes me very happy. Let's see. We also got, I don't know, maybe a foot or more of snow overnight. So it is... It's really coming down out there. Okay, this next item is an exciting sale. This is a brown leather bomber jacket and it is by Gibson and Barnes. Let's see, there we go, you can see that. So whenever I see uh, brown leather bomber jackets at the thrift store or estate sales, I always give them a good look uh, because I do well with Let's see, why is this not folding? I do well with brown bomber jackets. I'm gonna package it up off camera. It's just not, it's not cooperating. So I, like I said, I do well with brown leather jackets, vintage, distressed, good condition, new, anything, any and all. So I will look them up, uh, kind of look them over to decide if I wanna pick them up. That one, somehow my Goodwill missed it and they priced it at $5. I don't know why. Normally my Goodwill doesn't price uh, jackets for less than $10 period. Anyways, it sold for $129. I paid five. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $98.20. When I looked up that brand, it was a good brand, but 
even if it had been Wilson's or some other brand for $5, I definitely would have picked it up. Okay, the next item that sold is this, again, semi-vintage camel hair blazer by Lauren, Ralph Lauren. I just thought this was a beautiful classic piece. And actually, to begin with, I picked it up thinking that I might wear it, but it just sat in my closet and I never reached for it. So when I was cleaning out my closet recently, I decided to um, bring it in and list it and it sold somewhat quick, quickly. It sold for $35. It did have a couple little flaws, moth nibbles to the wool or the camel hair but they weren't like through and through holes. I did mention them and put uh, pictures, but they were pretty minor. I would have still worn it this way. So maybe it might've sold for a little bit more if it didn't have those flaws, but I'm pretty happy with $35. I'm pretty sure that I paid $5 for this. So after posh fees and my cost of goods that made my profit $23. I had a higher number of sales this week, but not, I mean, it was, a, it was a good week, but not so far, not a super high dollar or not my highest dollar week, uh, but I'm happy to move some of these, you know, bread and butter type items out. Did I say my profit was $23 on that? I think that's great for moving something out of my closet that was taking up space. Okay, the next item that sold is this Lululemon pullover. It's kind of got, is that called like hound's tooth kind of? I'm not sure, it has a zip top. I keep saying that I don't do very well with Lululemon. And then recently I've had some items sell for pretty great amounts. This sold for $49. And it wasn't listed a super long time, maybe a couple of months, but really not, not terribly long. I had picked this up for $2. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $37.20. So like I said, today is Friday. Monday is Martin Luther King Day. Is that what it is, I believe? So the post office will be closed. So if I have more sales, I will um, ship again tomorrow. So hopefully, I mean, I kind of hope I do and I kind of hope I don't because we're, there's more snow expected. And like I said, it's gonna get down to super cold. Let's see, oh, I can't, I was gonna see if I could flip you around easily and, show you what I'm seeing, but it doesn't let me flip you around when I'm filming. So thank you so much for watching. Don't go anywhere. If I don't have any more sales, uh, then T-Bird will make an appearance and I will still let you know what my total sales and profit for the week was. Okay, I'll be right back. Hi again, it's Saturday and I did have a couple more sales. So let's get started. The first item sold on Cherish and it is this stunning vintage art glass vase. And it's kind of a creamy color and then it has green and purple. Also on the inside, I'm not sure. Yeah, you can see that there are some iridescent flecks in there. It's just really a unique and spectacular piece. I believe that this was made in Murano, but I am not certain. I did research and ask in different groups and I could never figure it out for sure. So I did put in the listing that it was possibly made in Murano, uh, but that it is an art glass face. It ended up selling for $105. It's just really beautiful. I wish I had a place in my house for it. Uh, but I only paid a dollar for this at a small town thrift store. So after Cherish's fee and my cost of goods, that made my profit $82. I'm super excited about that. I'm gonna go ahead and move it out of the way and package it up off camera. So that was a nice surprise. I'm glad I had a couple of sales on Cherish this week. 
Uh, then these boots sold on Poshmark. They are just a pair of Roper leather boots with faux um, ostrich print on them. They also have some red rhinestones on there. These ended up selling for $39. They sold pretty quickly too. I mean, I think less than a week actually. So maybe I underpriced them. I did look up comps and that seemed like the range and they did have quite a bit of wear on them, which I of course mentioned, but I'm happy with the $39. These were given to me and they were just a little bit too big. So I decided to pass them on after posh fees and my cost of goods that made my profit $31 and 20 cents. I'll try to remember uh, to have T-Bird make an appearance after this since I, I promised. Um, but here are my total sales from the week. Uh, my total sales were $1,358. I'm very happy with that. My total cost of goods was $129.50. And my total profit after you take out any website fees, my cost of goods, and any shipping discounts was $940.46. Almost to my uh, weekly profit goal. I'm not going to complain at all for the, let's see, second week in January. That's pretty great. Thank you so much for watching and T-Bird will come in here and say hi and uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. I'll see you all next week. T-Bird's here to say thank you so very much for watching and we will see you again next week. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. <laughs> Can you say hi, T-Bird? Pretty bird. See you all next week.